applause, but I remember when 500 meant you were going to the Hall of Fame. Nowadays, in today's football, 500 puts you on the path, a significant number. Now McManus will line up for the field goal. He hit his first, now this from 43. The kick by McManus is good. And that'll make this a seven-point game. So a nice kick there as they are able to add on to their lead. And that's exactly what you're looking to do. Maneuver yourself into range. That way, if your drive stalls out, you're able to get something out of it. And they do so right there. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. They've got some stuff to build on from that last drive because they moved the football CD and then they tried to go for it on fourth down, didn't convert, probably left a bitter taste in their mouths. I would say so, and I think that they go out in this series determined for that not to happen again. In fact, they don't want to get to a fourth down opportunity. They just want to make sure they get it done within the parameters that they've set for themselves. Run their offense, get it into the end zone. Yeah, I think a little bit of determination and a dash of anger. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. Will go down as a gain of six, and it'll be a third and about 13. Looking to throw, Rich. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And a good job defensively. They stopped him short of the first at the 32. Brandon, it certainly looked like they had that play defended well, but it still almost worked. Got it to the running back. He wound up getting really good yardage out of it. But it was third and long, and they were able to rally and stop it before he could get to the marker. Here's Cameron Johnston now, as he's on to punt for Minnesota. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. Yeah, call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And the Texans will take over. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. First and 10 for Dalton. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Demarcus Lawrence, his second sack of the night. This is a little hard for me to compute because I'm watching sack after sack happen, but somehow they're still behind in the game. I would expect all of this defensive pressure to translate to them taking a lead, and thus far, it hasn't happened. Time's winding down. They don't want to waste this type of performance from these ace pass rushers. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. From the gun, they'll try to run it, and he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. The Texans on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. This is third and 17. And that is incomplete. The Texans send the punter out. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Dances by him. It'll be a 44-yard punt, six on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. On first and 10, Rich over the middle. It's complete. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for them there, didn't it? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They've got to go thank the guys on D. 
And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Picked off by J.C. Horn. And the Texans are going to take over at their own 41. Well, certainly not his best throw that time and not a good time to make it, Charles, when they were a nickel with five defensive backs on the field. And that's exactly why you have those five DBs out there. You want extra speed on the field, guys who have ball skills and understand what the passing game can do and gives them a chance to react and make a play on the football, and they take one of those away. Play fake. Here's Dalton. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. Back to throw. Dalton. A quick throw there going to be batted away and incomplete. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Out of the gun, it's Dalton. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Zadarius Smith in there for sack number 127 in his great career, moving him past Kansas City Hall of Famer Derek Thomas on the all-time list. I don't know what else can be said about this pass rush. They have been sensational, CD. That is now six sacks for them. And how many times do we talk to offensive coordinators and they say a sack is a result of everyone on offense not doing their job? But let's be honest about this one. This is the offensive line unable to counter the pass rush. They've been teeing off all game long. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. He had to get the ball away here in the fourth quarter while you're just holding a slim lead. But that punt, absolutely ideal. They pin them inside the five-yard line. They give their defense a really nice opportunity. And now out comes Minnesota. Here comes another drive from this unit. And Charles, they're coming off a costly mistake on the last possession, an interception in a game that is very close right now. Well, as we know, they all sting no matter what the situation. But in a one-possession game, That'll hurt a little bit more, but this is an excellent opportunity to make up for it on this drive. I just don't expect them to try and take huge gambles to make up that momentum in a hurry. They were looking for a cushion from that end zone. He gave it to him, 15 big yards. And they were backed up to start the drive, but not anymore. Now, that's the play call that the offensive coordinator had in his head. You saw the end result. He wanted to go ahead and push the ball downfield, and that's what they did, and they wound up with good yardage there to get things rolling. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. I think we were both wondering if we were going to see them try and push it deep downfield, facing a one-possession deficit late, and they certainly didn't disappoint. They gave it an effort. He'll try again with the arm here on second down, and he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. Again, he'll drop to throw. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's one of those where it feels like backyard football in a sense. You say, forget about the route. Just run to the open spot in the middle of the field, and I'll find you. Good throw, good concentration on the catch, and they pick up the first down. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. Off the play fake. Rich. A throw to the flat for Carter. So apparently some grabbing there in the middle of the O-line. I've often wondered why that doesn't happen more often for guys that play center. Having to snap the ball and then trying to get your hands into the proper position, that's difficult to do. He got caught that time. Looking to throw on second down. Rich. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Up 
operating from the gun. Rich firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. So five yards here, five on the play. And that's going to make it fourth down. He got out of bounds. That's a good thing, but still short of the first. And now, since this brings up fourth down, the defensive play call, grab your nerves, because now you don't want to be so amped up that you give them a first down by getting out of your lanes, but you also don't want to just lay back and let them have it easily. On is the punter, Johnston now, as he sends this one away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. Houston set to take over. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. And here's a handoff out of the gun. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Dalton now to pass. And his throw here is incomplete. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. To throw here, Dalton. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Throwing, Dalton. Right side, Claypool's got it. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they convert on third and three with a nice gain of seven yards. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down, went his way, it worked out. Doesn't matter whether they scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Now here's a little touch pass as they tap it quickly to their receiver. And he'll be brought down, it looks like right at the 40. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Hands it off out of the gun. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Only a gain of a yard, but that's all they needed. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. And, oh, he's unable to hold on to that defensively. A potential game changer, but it falls incomplete. Third down, a shot here for Dalton. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free, and it brings up fourth down. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this will remain a one-touchdown game. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. And still just down one score. We'll see how big of a role that missed field goal plays because it, of course, could have pushed this to a two-possession deficit for them. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. Well, that one hurts a bit. That was a golden opportunity to possibly put this one on ice, but he comes up empty. And how big of a miss might that turn out to be? Stay tuned. There's still time left on the clock. This could be critical. Still a one-score game. Had he hit that, it would have been two scores. Escaping the pressure right. Catch is made by Hawkinson, the tight end. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. Looking to throw. Rich. And he's got this to Jefferson. 
And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. On first down, Rich. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he's going to be taken down at about the 33. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Throw left side, taken in by Jefferson. And they're going to move it down the inside the 25. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes. And we've got a one-score game. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. They'll look to throw again. That's going to be caught. And all the way to the two-yard line there before crossing over out of bounds. A good pick up there, 22. That's what they need right now. Get the first down, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Just playing smart football, understanding the situation, making the plays necessary, and making sure that clock stops at every opportunity. A give up the middle to Carter, and he'll get in. Touchdown, Minnesota. Michael Carter. His second rushing touchdown on the year. And the Vikings are an extra point away from tying this game here in the final minutes. Well, the hard part's done. Now they just need to split the posts, tie it up, but then their defense is going to have to hold up to send it to overtime. Yeah, no matter what. I know there's an inclination in it when you have momentum to go for two here, but if you miss it, you don't give your defense a chance at all. Plus, it's been a good game. I want to see overtime. I'm selfish. <laughs> you obviously don't have a flight to catch. Tomorrow. The extra point, a vital one, and he gets it to go. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. Boy, hard to ask for a better game thus far. 27 apiece is our score as the kick's away. Taken in at the three. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Houston. And the way their last drive ended, boy, it was frustrating. They had a pretty good drive going. It was sustained, and then it stalled out, Charles, and they missed the field goal and got nothing out of it. Is that insult to injury? Because they had such a sustained drive, as you noted. So you know for the head coach, it almost felt like a little bit of failure to send out the field goal unit, and then to not even see the ball go through the post. What a bummer on that last drive for them. Got to pick themselves up from that one. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Now Dalton. That caught by Trimble. The clock still runs. We're at 90 seconds now. Dalton. He gets this to Myers. They'll wind up getting just a yard. And that's going to set up a tough third and nine. Being chased out left. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. The Vikings going to signal for their first to their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. Call it 46 yards on the punt, just a single yard on the return as he was covered quickly. And it will be Vikings ball, first and 10. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. Well, partner, here it is. They've got the chance to win the game. You'd have to think they need to get it near the opposite 40 to have a chance to kick a game-winning field goal. We'll see what they can do. And you're right about that, because if we look at it in macro, that's what it looks like. But I think in micro, the head coach has already asked the special teams coach, what is he feeling? What does he think? Where does he want the football? What's the yard line we have to get? And he's already relayed that to his quarterback and his offense. They know what the goal is. Now the key, can they get there? Now another timeout called for by the offense 
as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in this football game. Throwing on first down. Rich. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. And they're going to speed things up here. And this one right back into the hands of Jefferson. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 40. And the clock will now stop as a timeout is called with five seconds left. Well, the entire game coming down to this kick from Cade York. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. And now it all rests on the right foot of their kicker. This from long, very long range. And I tell you what, he got it from 58. That had lots of leg behind it. And it's celebration time on that sideline as they have taken the lead in the final seconds. He hasn't missed a kick all year. Why would he start now? That's a great question, isn't it? Well, maybe because that was the most nerve-wracking kick he had to attempt all year. But he knocked it through just like it was an easy chip shot. Well, this one, partner, was fun down to the very end. They got the points late, right before the whistle. Then the ensuing kickoff. They were hoping for magic on the other side, but couldn't get that spark. Fun if you won, <laughs> and fun for us, because we got to watch it and call it. That magic that you were talking about didn't occur at the end, but what a game all the way through. So for Minnesota, it was a great all-around performance as they come out of this one with the victory. And they'll get another road test next week as they head to New England to take on the Patriots. Meanwhile, for Houston, they'll fall to one and one. And they'll try again next week at home against Philadelphia. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports.